uh, quotient groups. We studied last time normal subgroups, and then we will use normal subgroups and the group itself to construct new groups which are called quotient subgroups. Okay, so how we do it? Assume we start with a normal subgroup N, a normal subgroup of a group G. We will denote J slash N. This looks like J divided by N, and it is the way we will do it. So that denotes the set of all right cassettes of N in G, the set of all right cassettes. We have seen what the right cassette is, and we found uh, many uh, right cassettes, all right cassettes for many uh, normal subgroups. We have seen many examples, and we will go over almost all these examples uh, today, and then construct uh, quotient subgroups. Okay, so the first goal here is to uh, define operation. So the idea we want to define a group which is g over n we want it to become a group so the element of that group the elements are the cassettes so we need to define operation between cassettes so we have a set of cassettes and we want to make it a group so we need to define operation on the element of that set so operation and the cassette which we call product of cassette so assume we have a cassette and a n is a normal subgroup a is an element of g and another right cassette and b so the idea is for the following we have set that consists of cassettes i want to take two cassettes and make a product and the result will be a cassette from that set okay so what will that cassette be so n a times n b is simply what we do we multiply a with b as we do in the group a and b are elements from the group g so we multiply them together inside the group g and then we get a new element and then use that element to, to make a cassette use the cassette of that element okay so uh, right cassettes are defined via or by elements of the groups of G. So when I multiply two cassettes and A times and B, what I do, I take the A, take the B, they come from the group G itself, multiply them, I get a new element, A, B. Then I call the cassette of that element. So now the resulting cassette is the result of the multiplications multiplication of the two cassettes we started with so this is the operation and we want to define whether uh, whether it is uh, will defined or not what do we mean by will defined operation where or when at what times we shall worry about a given operation whether it is will defined or not the answer is when the elements in that operation are classes, equivalence classes, congruous classes, or in general cassettes. Okay, so what's the idea of will defined here? Because as you see here, we are defining the multiplications of cassettes by using their representatives. We called A here. A representative of this cassette any element in that cassette is a representative actually and in here we used B as an element as a representative of that cassette and any other element in and B can be chosen as a representative so these two cassettes and a and and B can be represented by different elements and then we use these different elements multiply them in g and get the result of their multiplication and then call the cassette of that result that cassette this new cassette shall equal the one we already got so to make what i what i'm saying clear 
let's go here now this is what I am explaining here we have n a as a cosset assume it is the same as and b they are the same assume that means a and c are congruent modulo n so their cosset is the same is the same set we have seen this as a theorem again assume we have n b to be equal to n c and d sorry so b and d are congruent modulo n so they give the same cosset and b is the same as n d now when we do multiplication using these two elements here a and b and then we get a b take the result and then take the cosset of that result now the question here it is, is it the same as if we use C now we change your representative and A and C once I chose the representative A and another time I chose the representative C and in here I choose D instead of B if I multiply them I get C D now take that cosset of that element and then we must have these two cosset to be equal the one which is represented by a B is the same shall be the same as the one represented by C D C D and A B might not be equal might or might not be equal now, they might be different elements and uh, they must give the same their their cosset must be the same we must have this happening with us so that multiply cosset is not changed according to using different representatives from cossets okay so we need to use that multiplication of, or product of cossets to define a, a new group and we are worrying if that operation is well defined or not as I explained and now theorem 2.12 will easily say don't worry if you are using a normal subgroup then that product of right cosset is well defined and before we go to that theorem remember if we have a congruent to C modulo n and we have B to be congruent to D modulo n then if we multiply A and B we'll get the same as congruent not the same if you multiply A is congruent to C B is congruent to D so A B is congruent to D C modulo n when this thing is true this was the main uh, uh, topic of uh, uh, last uh, lecture this is it true if n is normal subgroup of g and we proved it okay now we are going to use it here now let's go back to our uh, question if we have n a and n c to be the same element that means a and c sorry and it and, and c to be the same element i should say uh, assert that the same cosset and a and n c the same cosset that means a and c are congruent modulo n and that means a times c inverse shall belong to n and also assume that uh, the right cosset and b and n d are the same and that means b and d are congruent modulo n and this is the definition of congruent and now here what do we want to prove we want to show that the right cosset of a b is the same as the right cosset of c d which means we want to prove that a b and c d they are congruent modulo n and we prove it by proving this membership okay so let's start let's start from here 
AB times CD inverse equals it is A B D inverse times C inverse okay and now let me write uh, here that means B D inverse equals some N let me say N2 for some N2 belongs to the subgroup N and let me here say AC1 equals N1 for some N1 belongs to the subgroup N okay and now let's use that BD inverse equals uh, N2 so we got A and 2 C inverse okay and now we want to keep moving and remember that n is normal okay I was supposed to use the thing I wrote in black okay I did not use it which is fine but if I use it things will be uh, faster uh, okay so I will keep going I just I'm I'm doing the details of proving uh, this theorem here so instead of using it I'm finding myself uh, using the proof which is which is not bad okay now I want to look at this here and to see uh, and to see inverse what's about and to see inverse and to see inverse it belongs to n c inverse but since n is normal this is c inverse n right since n is normal okay which means So I got N2 C inverse belongs to C N. That means N2 C inverse equals C inverse, let's say N3 for some N3 belongs to N. Okay, so let me go in here and say, okay, this is equals A C inverse N3. And now use associativity this equals AC inverse times N3 but AC inverse here belongs to N so I will say this equals uh, this belongs to N because AC inverse belongs to N and N3 belongs to N and then the multiplication stays in N as N is a subgroup and then we are done with what we want this is uh, actually uh, uh, the way I proved it here it brings together the proof of this theorem above here and this theorem here okay I could use the again I could use this theorem just right away but uh, I went in details okay so okay so proving this theorem means that the operation we are defining on uh, the, as a product of right cosset that operation is well defined. Remember, we define this operation in the set of cossets of the normal subgroup N on a group G, which we denoted uh, this way. Now, let N be a normal subgroup of G again. Now, here we are saying G over N. Remember, this means the set of all cossets of N inside G. We can write them this way and A where A belongs to G. And we will see uh, many examples to make that more sensible. So this is a group under this operation. So this is a group. Now we are using here an A times NC equals N AC. 
to prove it is a group, we need to satisfy the four operations, like, uh, right, closed, uh, identity in th is in there, the inverse of every element, and the associative. Okay, we will do it. If G is finite, then the order, the number of, the order of G over N, which means the number of the right capsules of N, that is the index. This is the index of uh, N inside G. And three, if N is abelian, G is abelian, then G over N is abelian. So let's go and prove all these things. Now, uh, by proving that we have G over N to be a group, and it will be called quotient group or factor group. And we need to specify it is quotient group of G by N. And uh, the name makes sense because quotient or factor means that we are dividing something over uh, something. We're dividing G over N. And we will actually be partitioning or dividing a G according to the subgroup N. The uh, subgroup N and its right cassettes will give a partition of G. And we have already uh, explained that. So that's why we call it quotient. Or factor okay so let's go and uh, work out the proof uh, okay to prove uh, uh, it is a group here uh, the operation is well defined and uh, it is closed okay we have seen it already taking two cassette multiply them you get a cassette so it is a closed we need to worry about the identity uh, the cassette n which is an e you notice here N is the cassette, uh, uh, the right cassette represented by E. Actually, uh, you must always uh, know that uh, N is the right cassette of any element uh, for any. And we have seen such a things for examples for any. If you use any element from the subgroup N, any element so you have a subgroup in right take any element in there and compute the right cassette of it it will give you n okay now so n equals n times the identity now choose any element choose any element n a in the in the uh, a quotient uh, in group so any any element in g over n is 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 of this form so let's see uh, N A times N E is N, the right cassette of N A times E, which is A. So we got what we got. We started with N A, multiplied it with this, and ended with N A. So nothing changed. Same thing here from the other side. We start with N A, do this multiplication, E A, and then we end with N A. So indeed, uh, N is the identity element of G over N. What's about the inverse? Which means take any cosset, take any cosset. Is there another cosset that if you multiply with it and then we get the identity which is n? Okay, so this this is any cosset. Any cosset has this form and then we claim that the inverse is the cosset that is represented by a inverse. So any cosset is represented by some element, say a. Then the cosset represented by A, its inverse is the cosset represented by A inverse. So let's see. This is an A multiplied by an A inverse. Do the multiplication, we get the identity. Okay, from the other side, same thing, we get the identity. So we got the inverse. Associativity in GN follows from that in G. What does that mean, follows? Let's see. If you want to multiply three cossets, Let's first multiply NA by NB and then we multiply it by NC. Now NA and B is that. Now I have two cassettes here. So this goes for NA and B here. Now I will multiply N, the casset of AB, by the casset of C. So I multiply AB times C. Here we go. AB times C. A, B times C. Now, but these elements are from the group A, B, and C. 
So associativity happened there because G is a group and these elements are all, these elements are all from the group. So associativity happened there. So we will work the associativity this way. So from here to here, that means from that in G, which means the associativity in G. Now we go back the opposite way and write this is equals Na times N of BC. And now go to BC here and write them as cosets. And then we get that. And then what happened? Multiplying the first two cosets with the last one is the same as multiplying the uh, first one with the product of the last two. So associativity happens here. Okay, good. So G over N is a group, indeed. Now here it says the order of G over N, the number of elements in G over N. How many cosets are there? So we know is the number of distinct right cosets, which is the index. We define this to be the number of uh, distinct right cosets of N inside G. Okay, and. Uh, Okay, so it uh, and we know by Langrage theorem that this index equals order of G divided by order of N. So that means, let me write it here, the order of G over N, the factor group of G, uh, in, uh, the factor group of G by N, or the quotient group, the order is simply order of G over order of N, the factor group of G by N. Okay. Now, part 3, what does the part 3 say? If J is abelian, so we want to prove here, if G is abelian, then we want to show that it, the factor group of G by N is abelian. So, okay, let's choose two elements from here and see if the, when, and, and multiply them and see if the order matters it should not matter and uh, let's see how uh, choose n times a multiply this by n times b and then uh, by definition this is n a b but we are in g is abelian that means a b is the same as b a and simply this is according to the uh, uh, product we defined okay so we have n a and b equals n b n a and that gives g over n is abelian okay and this finishes the proof of the theorem okay now things will be more clear working on example we will do many examples uh, for uh, constructing uh, factor uh, groups. So let's start with uh, the subgroup. We have chosen this before. The subgroup N that consists of R0, R1, R2, R3. And we have seen it is normal subgroup of D4. Remember R0 is the square as it is. So this is, the, this is the identity permutation. R1 is rotation by 90 degree. R2 is rotation by 190 degree. R3 is rotation by 100, uh, uh, seven, 270 degrees. Actually, uh, these are to the left, to the right here, uh, are the elements of the group D4. They will, they will help us to do computation now. Okay. So n r0, r0 is the identity. So this is the same as n. Simply r0 times any element in here gives uh, that element because r0 is the identity. So this is n. Okay. Now let's choose any other element outside of n. Uh, here we chose v and then compute nv which means r0 v r1 v r2 r3 v and then do that computation we get the result to be v dht so this is the cosset of nv what's about the cossets the other cossets this is the same as the cosset of n d right because uh, 
if we compute V times D inverse, and then we will find ourselves B and N. We have seen such a thing before. And also we have seen that this is the same as cosset of H, and this is the same as cosset of T. Okay? So we will not repeat that, just we will write one of them, because if all these, let me uh, mark them in red, N, V, N, H, N, T, N, D, they are all the same element, they are all the same cosset. So we will write one of them only here. So we have N, V. Same thing goes for N, R, 0 here is the same as N, R, 1, and we have seen this in a previous lecture. And this is, uh, this is multiplication, sorry, it's not a subscript, it's a multiplication. So this is n times r2 and times r3. So okay, so we shall we will use an r0 uh, to represent that. Okay, so the group d4 over n, this is d4 factored by n, consists only of two cosets, and this is natural because uh, because uh, here if we compute order of d4 over the order of n which means 8 over 4 which is 2 so we'll have two cosets only now this table represent the multiplications of cosets for instance n r0 times n r0 r0 is the identity is n r0 times r0 which is the same as n r0 okay same thing for multiplying n r0 times n v just go ahead and say this is n of r0 times v which is uh, v r0 is the identity okay and what's about n v times n v is the same as the cosset of v squares v times v but v times v is the identity in here this is v just squares you get the identity so this is the same as n r0 the identity is r0 so this is n okay or in r0 it is here now in v times in v is r0 so good this gives the multiplication table of the cosset of the factor group d4 by n and therefore we have a group of two elements if you notice here this is a group of two elements and we have only one group of two elements up to isomorphism which is z2 therefore d4 factor by n is z2 interesting d4 is a group with eight element whose elements are permutations that are bijections functions and n is a subgroup of it so doing a factory group of such a group with with a, such a subgroup simply give us z2 a, a group which is isomorphic to z2 it behaves the same as z2 let's see what happens if we choose another subgroup of d4 here we go this time we will choose a subgroup m consists of r0 r2 now this is the subgroup and it is generated by r2 actually because here r2 squares identity where is r2 here okay now compute the cosets we have already computed these cosets before so mr0 is the same as mr2 mh is the same as mv this is simply because if you compute v times h inverse and then you will find it equals to m uh, belongs to m and actually it equals uh, r2 same thing md is the same as cosset mt now we have the d and the t and we can do computations here and we can prove that d times d inverse and that equals r2 again and this belongs to m and therefore d and t are congruent modulo m and that means uh, m 
d cosset of d is the same as cosset of n and i showed right here v and h are congruent module m and that means the cosset of v is the same as as cosset of h okay so the set of cosset can be represented by mr0 so we are choosing this mh mr1 M md here we go and maybe I missed here to say that R1 and R3 inverse just compute it, it will be R2 which belongs to M. So they give the same cosset. So we have four distinct cossets. So D4 factored by M consists of four cossets. It is a group of order four. And we know there are two groups of order four, either the cyclic one, Z4, or the Z2 cross Z2 which one of this group this is isomorphic to to know that let's work the multiplication table of these cossets okay so simply now if we go and multiply every element with m0 here say m0 times mr1 we get m0 this is the identity so we get mr1 here uh, mr0 times mh is mh mr0 times md is md okay now mr1 let us multiply mr1 times so let me just keep going in green uh, because i want to see here now mr1 times mr0 gives me mr1 mh times mr0 gives me mh and same thing for md now let me use uh, is this supposed to be green okay now let me use uh, let me multiply mr1 times mr1 how do i do that let's see mr1 times mr1 that means i want to compute m of uh, the cosset of r1 times r1 okay now this is r1 square it and then we get this is the cosset of uh, 1 going to 3 if you do the square and 2 goes to 4 but what this element is this element is uh, 1 going to 3 to R2 so this is MR2 okay but what is R2, MR2 what this cosset is is the same as M R0 because they are they have they are the same cosset as we see here okay so mr1 times mr1 is mr0 okay what's about mr1 times mh that means that means we will just multiply r1 by h and see what we get where is R1? Here is R1. And here is H. If you multiply them, we get... Uh, we get what? 1 going to 2. 2 going to 3. So 1 is going to 3. 3 going to 4. 4 going to 1. So I think uh, if we multiply it, we get that. But what this element is... And I'm... But I multiply no, I did not multiply it correctly, so let me go back. R1 times H, R1 times H. Okay. So let's let's multiply it correctly. Okay, go back, go back, please again. Uh, R1 times H. So we will use okay, I see what I got here. I must use R1 to the left, so I I must start R1 times H, so I will see what this is h elements going here so one is going to two and goes two is going to three this is for h r1 times h okay let's do the multiplication let's see Turn on. okay so let's let's multiply here r1 r1 times h let's let us do it here R1 is 1, 2, 3, 4. H is 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we get? 
uh, one going to two and two going to three now three going to four four going to one we closed okay two going to one and one going to two does not appear four going to three three going to four does not appear okay and this is this is what this is d this is d so i will go here and say okay this is md i go to the group okay and uh, this is not d this is t sorry i'm sorry for that let's uh, uh let's take it in here this is t okay so this equals a t so this equals mt but we don't see mt in the group where is mt mt is here and it is the same as md so okay we will say this is md so what we did multiplying mr1 times mh and then we got md okay now let's do the multiplication of the which is an exercise you are supposed to do of the remaining ones let's multiply md let me erase all that let's multiply now md times mh we want to complete uh, the uh, the spaces there So, okay, now let's do the multiplication of, let's multiply uh, MD times MH and see what that gives. MD times MH, which means M times DH, and let's work what DH equals. Uh, D h equals where is d d is 2 4 and where is h h is 1 2 3 4 okay so let's compute that one is going to two go two is going to four four going to three three going to three three going to four four going to two okay this is it okay and this means m one four three two but what is a one four three two is m one four three two m r three okay but we don't see m r three here but it is the same as m r one so this is m r one and here we go now we complete this table it is m r one okay now to complete the remaining spots this must be m of r1 times d now you go and multiply r1 times d and see what you get uh, and this shall be m of h d and this shall be m of d d which must be uh, d square which is uh, the identity now notice here if we uh, this is the identity so multiply identity by identity fine now multiply mr1 by mr1 we get identity so we got mr1 square is the identity and same thing if we multiply mh times mh we get the identity also mh square is m and same thing if you go for md square then we get m so every time here we get the identity now that means every non-identity element has order 2 right every cosset if you multiply it by itself you get the identity so the order is 2 so we got a group here now we look back here this is a group that has four elements the identity of each one of these elements is a two which means there is no element of order four no element of order four which means this element is not cyclic so this group is not cyclic so this group has order four and it is not cyclic and has order 4 
we know D4, the order of group D4 over M is 8 over 2, the order of M is 2, which means 4. So the order of this group here is 4, and it is not cyclic. And so it must be azeomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. Remember that by a theorem we have seen before that it says every group of order 4 is either isomorphic to Z4 or to Z2 cross Z2. So if it is not cyclic, then it is not isomorphic to Z4. And therefore, it is isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. So interesting, the group D4 of permutation factored by the subgroup M. So that's, that's a group of functions, permutations, bijections. When you do a factory group over a subgroup of it, we get something isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. And above there, something isomorphic to Z4. This is interesting. By interesting here, I mean we have groups. D4, it is not a billion group, but it is isomorphic to something abelian. Okay, in this example. And the above example, again, D4 is not... Okay, good. Okay, more examples. Now we have the subgroup N to be uh, the generated by 4 inside Z12. So generated by 4, N uh, is 0, 4, 8. So N, now the cosset, we have the operation here is addition. So the cosset is N plus something. N plus 0 gives that. N plus 1, then we add 1 to every element in the subgroup. So we get 1, 5, 9. N plus 2 gives 2, 6, 8, and N plus 3 gives that. Notice we are in, 12, in Z12, so we have elements from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, all the way to 11. Where is the, for example, where is the subgroup of uh, the, 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 cassette, the right cassette of 11? This is the right cassette of 11, right? This is the right cassette of 11. And it is the same as the right cassette of 7. And it is the same as the right cassette of 3. It is in there. So this is the same as the right cassette of 6 plus 6. And this is the same as the right cassette of 10. This is the same as the right cassette of 5. And it is the same as the right cassette of 9. This is the same as the right cassette of 4. And the same as the right cassette of 8. So we consumed all elements of Z12. But we got only four cassettes, okay? Because every four elements give us the same cassette. Uh, okay, every three elements, sorry, give us the same cassette. So the cassettes are only n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3. If you say, where is n plus 5? I would say, okay, this is n plus 5 here. Where is n plus 7? Where is n plus 7? It is the same as, one, as this one here. So we have four cassettes. Now we do multiplication of these cassettes. And now things are uh, easy. Let's do uh, here we do addition. Product of cassettes here is addition. I said multiplication, okay, because we, we call the operation of cassettes product. So for example, if I want to say n, uh, I want it, we, we are using m, n here, not m. So if I want to do operation between this cassette and this cassette, that means we will add, okay, and that means we will do this. And 2 plus 3 is 5, so we get that. Okay, n plus 5, but we don't have n plus 5 here. So which one it is? It is the same n plus 1. Okay, so let's see, n plus 2, this cosset, n plus 3, do the addition, what we got? We got n plus 1. Good. So uh, work all other uh, multiplication or addition in here in this table. Now notice uh, z12 over n here, this factor or quotient group has four elements. So it is either isomorphic to z4 
or isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. How do we know that? Look at the multiplication table. Let's see. Do we have an element whose, uh, whose has order 4? Okay, this one. This one, n plus 1 has order 4. This is because, let's see, n plus 1 uh, added to itself two times we get, this is 1, we get n plus 2. Okay, add it to, is, to itself three times we get n plus 3. Four times we get n, and so on. So I will say that n plus 1 now to power 3. Now power here means we do operation with itself three times. The operation here is addition. That means 1 plus 1 plus 1, and that means it is n plus 3. And now again, n plus, uh, okay, I missed, okay, 2 is there. So to power 4 is the same as n, 1 uh, plus 1 plus 1, 4 times, so it is n plus 4. But n plus 4 is the same as n, the identity. Here we go. Okay, look in here. So uh, this has order 4. It is a group of order 4 and has an element whose order is 4. And then we conclude z12 factored by n is isomorphic to z4 okay let's choose now uh, another example let n be the cyclic group and be the cyclic group generated by one and two this is interesting okay and z2 cross z4 g here let me re rewrite it is z2 cross z4 so it is a cross product of groups first coordinate comes from z2 and second coordinate comes from z4 and now uh, this is 1 2 added to itself we get 1 plus 1 which is 0 2 plus 2 which is 4 which is again 0 okay so 1 plus 2 So the n, n is the cyclic group generated by 1, 2. We notice here uh, 1, 2 square, which means uh, we will add it to itself two times. And then the result comes out to be 0, 0, which is the identity. And therefore, n is the, uh, consists of the two ordered pairs, 0, 0, and 1, 2. And then we want to compute the factor group of g by n. Now, OK n plus 0, 0 is the same as n, which is the same as n uh, plus 1, 2. Now, uh, let's list the element of uh, g. They are 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3, 1, 1, let me see here, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. So, okay. Let us compute the uh, cosets, the right cosset of n inside this group G. So, what the 1, the 0, 0 here, the 0, 0, and 1, 2 has been taken. Yeah, it has been taken in this cosset. Let's uh, use, let us use 1, 0, and then add it to n. And then we add 1, 0 to 0, 0, and to 1, 2, and then we get 1, 0, 0, 2. Now, this cosset is the same as the cosset given by 0, 2, because 0, 2, 1, 0 are in here. So we have consumed 1, 0, this is 1, 0, and 0, 2. Let's keep going now. Uh, the cossets represented by 0, 1. So we have to look for elements that are left behind 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 3, 1, 3. So let's use 0, 1. So the cosset of 0, 1, just add 0, 1 to the elements of n, 0, 0, and 1, 2. We get 0, 1 and 1, 3. And this is the same cosset as 1, 3. So we have consumed these two. And now 
at the end let's compute the cosets of uh, 1 1 let's choose this element it is left behind so add that to the element of n we get uh, 1 1 0 3 which is the same cosset as uh, 0 3 and then these are consumed and so uh, we have these four cosets as g over n consists of these four cosets okay now we will do the uh, multiplication table or the addition table here we are using addition to see how the operation in g over n works so okay for instance let's choose uh, let's add uh, this cosset of 1 1 to itself so what will happen so n of 1 1 plus n of 1 1 this is the same as n of 1 1 plus 1 1 which is if we add we get 2 2 but first coordinate is added modulo 2 because first coordinate of elements of G comes from Z2 so we get 0 and then 2 second coordinate are added modulo Z4 okay so here we go when we add we got n02 but where is n z2 i don't see it here oh i found i found n10 but it is the same as n02 because of that n10 is the same as n02 notice that we are using uh, the representation of cosets in this way here we did not use these in here we could use any of them actually okay so let's do one more uh, addition let's add uh, this one to uh, this one here and see what we get so we will add uh, n 0 1 plus n of 0 1 and that shall equal n of 0 1 added to itself and that equals 0 plus 0 is 0 0 2 and 0 2 which is the same as 1 0 so here we go this is the addition now do this for all uh, the remaining component of this table and now also notice that this element n plus zero one has order four how do we know that we just compute its powers and uh, to make sure let's do it here n plus zero one let's take the second power which means n plus zero one square but the square here means addition so we will add this to itself two times and then we get n zero two but this is the same as zero two this is the same as n zero one so okay so unsquare gives us n zero one what's about uh, sorry n uh, n plus zero one give us uh, uh, what's happening here is it not supposed to uh, n zero one it has order four when i square it what i got zero two and zero two one zero sorry this is the same as one zero so let me take this away this is the same as one zero now what's about n let, let me take that cosset and raise it to power 3 and this is the same as taking this and raising uh, 0 1 to power 3 
which means I add this ordered pair to itself three times. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Okay. Now, what's about n? I take that cosset and raise it to power 4 and then do the work and in, you will find it equals n or n zero zero so raising it to power one it gives itself to power two it gives that to power three it gives n zero three which is the same as n plus one one and to power four gives that so okay so this element has order four so g over n contains four element and it has an element of order four and therefore it is cyclic of order four so it is isomorphic to z4 okay now in this example we show that it is not necessary always to do that to work out the, oper the, tip the operation table or the multiplication table to know the structure of the quotient group for instance if we have this group to be G okay and we choose M to be generated by 13 we are working module 4 here so 13 plus 13 is uh, uh, 26 we are we are sorry we are adding we are multiplying here so 13 times 13 is 1 and 6 uh, 169 taking module 14 is 1 so this is the group generated by 13 now uh, g over m here the order more examples to see uh, if uh, now we choose the subgroup uh, G to be Z and choose the uh, the group is G which is Z now the subgroup is generated by four all multiples of four all of them negative or positive and remember that two con two integers are congruent module four uh, which means uh, four divides the difference between them which means a minus b belongs to k so in here the equivalence classes or the congruent classes we have seen before are the same as the cossets so for instance the congruence class of 3 we have seen this before is the same as the cosset of 3 okay because congruence now congruence module 4 is equivalent for having the two elements to be congruent modulo the k the subgroup okay so that means uh, instead of having uh, adding of two uh, equivalence classes we will be saying that we are adding two right cossets and the way to add is this which is the same as that and therefore z over k is the group of congruence classes of four oh, okay the group of congruence classes of four what's happening here z over k we can say k is generated by 4 this is simply z4 it's not as a morph z4 this is the way we defined it z4 or we will write it this way z over 4z because k can be written also as 4z this is z4 and we can do this in general instead of using 4 we can use any other integer in here we will say k is cyclic group subgroup generated by n of z then this happens that means okay uh, if we choose z and take the group generated by n where n is an integer non zero integer that gives us a z n or we will say z 
factored by 6z, sorry, because we are used to 6z, we worked in that example in details, nz, where n can be 6 or any other integer, this is zn. So this is a factor group, huh? This is a factor group. It consists of uh, nz plus 0, which is the same as nz, nz plus 1, and we have such seen such a thing before, plus 2, and we keep going all the way till we reach nz plus what? nz plus n minus 1. Why? Because if we say in z plus n, this is the same as that one. And this is the same as in z plus n plus 1. And so on. Okay. Uh, the, all the examples we have seen for factor groups uh, came out to be a finite groups. Now we will see a factor group which is not finite. Now uh, we will use uh, the group G to be the rational numbers and Z is a subgroup of it. N we will choose it to be Z. Now which means now Q over N consists of all cassettes so q sorry uh, over z over n which is z consists of all cassettes of this form z plus a where a is a rational number so and we will have infinitely many of these why let's see z plus a and z plus c where a and c are elements rational numbers they will be equal if a minus c belongs to z right two elements are congruent modulo subgroup if uh, one of them operation the inverse of the other and we have addition here so the inverse is a minus subtraction so a minus c belongs to z so two rational numbers a and c gives you the same cosset if their difference is in z is an integer and this goes in the two direction if and only if now if we choose c and a to be any two rational numbers in the interval 0 1 then a plus c a plus a and a plus c they must be distinct distinct why because a minus c will be less than 1 and will be greater than uh, 0 so that means a minus c does not belong to z and therefore the cosset given by a will never equal the cosset given by c they will be distinct so for every rational numbers between 0 and 1 every two distinct rational numbers in the interval 0 and 1 gives you two different two distinct cosets of z okay but there are infinitely many rational numbers between 0 and 1 so we will have infinitely many distinct cosets of z okay so therefore q over z is infinite because there are infinitely many distinct cosets of z okay good now in here it says nevertheless the every element in q over z has finite order this is question 25 let us to uh, prove that uh, choose uh, a cosset choose some cosset uh, z plus a belongs to q over z uh, that means a is an element of q okay write it a as p over q with p q integers and q does not equal zero okay so what happened now remember here operation is addition now what i will do z plus a to power q 
that means I will add it to itself Q times because the power here means the operation Q times but now using the operation of cosses that means I will do this I will add A to itself Q times but A is P over Q and then add that to itself Q times what we get we get Z plus P okay we get Z plus P and P is an integer B here is an integer so this is the same as Z okay let's say plus zero why because Z plus P and Z plus zero uh, they are the same because So the structure of N, G, and the factor group made out of them are related. Let's see how. If N is normal subgroup of G, now what's happened? G over N, this is the new group we are obtaining, is abelian. If and only if, this happens. A, B, A inverse, P inverse belongs to N for all, for all. All a b belongs to g. So a times b times a inverse times b inverse will be always in n, no matter what elements a and b are. They are coming just from the group g. Let's see. What does it mean for g g over n to be abelian? G over n to be abelian. What does it mean? We must have that n times a. The cosset of a multiplied by the cosset of B is the same as the cosset of B multiplied by the cosset of A so it does not matter the order so let's see in here so the proof we say is that okay let's start with NAB that means it is the cosset of A times the cosset of P but since uh, G is abelian then this is the same as cosset of B times the cosset of A okay and this is the same as an B A now what we got here an A B equals an B A we want to prove we want to prove that so that means we got these two cossets to be equal let's write them here an B A but what what does it mean for two cossets to be equal they are they are the same cosset but given with different uh, elements huh so that means a b this element times the inverse of that b a inverse must belongs to n okay but what does that equal it equals a b a inverse b inverse belongs to n so good so we proved that now going the opposite way if we have this in hand then that means we, okay, we uh, that means okay that I should say that at the beginning now going the opposite if we have this in hand we go this way up here and this takes us up there if this if this happens then they give, give us the same cosset then we go the opposite way and then all the way and then we prove that an a b uh, sorry, we prove that N A times N uh, B equals N B times N A, which me gives that G over N is abelian. So the two directions are proved uh, simultaneously at the same time.
okay one more thing about the structure of the uh, group G over N how it is related to the structure of G now it says that uh, let G be a group such that such that this quotient group is cyclic so what this quotient group is Z of G Z of G is the center okay so remember here uh, Z of G uh, consists of all elements A from the group G such that A computes commutes with all elements in G so this is the center the center of G okay and let's, uh, let us give it uh, a notation let's give it C center okay to make the proof easier now we are seeing here in this theorem we are seeing if we make a factory group of G over its center and this factory group came out to be cyclic then the group itself is abelian we want to prove this theorem so proof we want to show it is abelian so let's start with let A and B belongs to G what do we want to show it is abelian simply we want A B T equals B A okay let's do that now C A is, a, is an element C A is an F is a cosset so it is an element of this factor group okay uh, but this factory group is assumed to be cyclic so let me uh, write that uh, bef uh, at the beginning uh, since G over C is cyclic that then we have a generator then G over C is generated by is generated by some element from there so some element in that group will in the factor group will generate it but all elements in there are cosset so generated by some cosset so let's let's call and cosset are of this form so let's call it cd so let's write that that is g over c is generated by the cosset CD okay which means any element for example a C a any cosset any element of this uh, factor group let C a belong to G over a then C a must equal C D to power T for some T but uh, this equals c d to power t so uh, multiplying the cosset by itself t times it means multiplying the representative by itself t times and then take the cosset okay and that means a equals since uh, c this c is a subgroup with center so uh, e belongs the identity belongs to c okay the identity belongs to C and that means uh, a belongs to its cosset okay so I have a belongs to C a that means a belongs to C to this cosset C D to power T and that means a equals let's say C1 d to power t for some c1 belongs to c and remember c1 comes from c and c is the center so c1 commutes with every element in g now similarly if we choose the cosset of b it is in this factor group then same thing since 
g over c is generated by c d then the cosset of b equals a power of this cosset c d c s and that means it's c d to power s and similarly that means d belongs to c d to power s and that means d equals c2 d to power s for some c2 belongs to c and remember c is the center of the group so c2 and similarly c1 uh, commutes with any element in the group now what happened remember that we want to show that b a b equals b a now multiply a b and let's use these things here this equals c1 small c1 actually these are elements not cosets anymore c1 times d to power t and b is c2 d to power s okay and now let's it you let's use the associativity we are in a group so this is the dt multiplied by c2 multiplied by d to power s okay but now c2 is in the center is in the center of the group so it commutes with any element in the group so this must happen and this c1 and this is uh, ds okay good now let's let us use uh, associativity again okay what do we do now now uh, and write c1 c2 times dt times ds we can do that right and this can be written as Now, uh, can be written as ds times dt, right? Okay. And then, let's keep going. We get to the associativity again. This is c2 d to power s, okay, times d.